Hello everybody, I'm two minutes early. Um, and that is mainly because I can read some of the comments on here already, which of course, if you're watching this later as, um, as just a normal tutorial, you might not get the comments. So I hope you like my um, Christmas tree decoration. I um, if you saw it earlier on, um, of course, they always turn their backs. If you saw it earlier on Facebook, then um, I did actually um, introduce myself as Steffi in case you thought I was a Christmas tree, which is easily that confusion can easily happen as I'm fully decorated with um, three baubles at the moment. So let's have a look who's here. Um, let's start at the top. Hi, Mo. Faith is there. Hi, Faith. Um, Alicia is here, of course. Um, Rachel. Now, Rachel, I have to say, this is just absolutely fantastic. We've got something very special in the post. This is really lovely. It was such a, a lovely gesture. And then I have to show you these as well. So I've got to do a bit of rustling here um, because I haven't actually taken them out of the plastic bag, but I don't think they look so nice in the plastic bag. And um, this is what we've been sent by Rachel and Danielle. And it says, um, on this one, it says Sophie. How nice is that? Love hearts. Love hearts are my favorite sweets, by the way. I'm not really allowed to eat them, but I might just sneak one in a day. And this is for all the makers. And then I get my very own one as well with just Steffi on it. I love it that Sophie and I can eat all of these each and the makers have to share a roll. It's perfect. That is just um, the best gift ever. And I, um, I understand that Daniel is actually going back to um, his crafty um, Thursdays um, where he won't be able to join us. But today is Tuesday, so thank you so much, Daniel, and thank you so much, Rachel, for thinking of us. And it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And whenever you can, do join us. Um, so, what should I say? Merry Christmas. Yeah, well, actually, do you know, as I was setting up myself here behind me, I started to uh, whistle some Christmas songs. So, that, um, yeah, just to get into the mood. Um, Helen is there. Hi, Helen. Not sure how much I'll get done. My two mile walk was tough. Oh, well, well, well done. You've been out. Uh, that's more miles than I've walked today. Um, Alex is there. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone, and especially Steffi and the makers. I'm watching on the telly, so can't always chat, but love listening, um, love listening through Steffi. Oh, nice to see. You. Love listening through Steffi. Oh, nice to see you, Alex. And, um, and, and if you wonder who is there at the makers, because Emma is on holiday this week, it's Emma. She's taking the time to be here for the live stream, so which is extra super nice. And um, I'm really pleased that uh, she's she's at the other end, somewhere up north. Um, Janet is there. Hi, Janet. Um, Sandra, Carol. Love the jewellery. It's nice, isn't it? I know. Looking very fetching. Um and yeah so that's the, i think that's the comments for now so um, let's start making some really cool reindeer um they are really easy to make and super fun to make because um you can make them um like little looking like little special characters maybe you have a family member who you want to look like that um or maybe you want to be a reindeer there maybe you make a self portrait and and then of course and then of course if we've got time i will show you how to make this penguin um i don't know how good the quality is of the video today but um hopefully everybody on site here at mother goose is not um is um at mother goose where did that come from oh my god I haven't said that word for ages that used to be my craft shop years ago um, and it just was a slip of the tongue, so just ignore that bit. It doesn't even exist anymore. Um, hopefully here at the Makers, people aren't um, uploading photos. That, that's when our Wi-Fi doesn't um, help um, at all. But what I could do is I could just um, have a quick look and seeing if I can... I'm already on a really low definition, but I go a tiny bit lower and see if it's any better. Just let me know if for whatever reason it's better or worse. And, oh dear, now what do I do? Uh, you have unsaved changes. Yes, save the changes. There we go. Right, let's start on the reindeer. Um, if you have one of these, that's our bauble pack that you can buy. That makes six in total, three of each design. So you get to make 
um, six in total and it's obviously the um, the reindeer and the baubles that's sort of roughly the size you're making like a handful like a size of a tennis ball and you get everything in there to make them except the tools so this is one of our packs which packs usually don't ex include tools but yet in there the eyes which are really important and of course you get lots of wool so the pipe cleaners are in there as well we only need one so i'm just gonna grab what i need for one um there we go and put the rest away need a little bit of white and i haven't decided yet on what color hair my um my little uh, reindeer will have whether it's black or gray like this one you could even use white so maybe i do a white one i haven't i haven't made a white one so i'm going to leave the black out and of course you need red because we need a bright red nose haha -ha. so the great thing about these reindeer is that it gives you a mini mini um introduction into the wrapping pipe cleaner because that's how we start by using the pipe cleaner and wrapping them with wool and um and that 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 has to be a good thing right and if you've watched last week if you've watched making these little robins and puddings then you'll be pleased to know that the penguin is very similar to the robin so you will already be a step ahead but the reindeer is a slightly different technique but nonetheless as as um as easy and um and really really um easy to learn and quick to make so i'm just going to clear the decks here a bit so i can get a bit smaller zoom in here we are right one pipe cleaner so you need one pipe cleaner per reindeer there it is and i'm going to zoom in a bit more and i'm just going to take this reindeer off because it looks like he's um definitely drunk and um and wobbling about so i'm going to take him off now all the all the christmas tree decoration off me i'm i'm just steffy again and not some tree hang on got tangled up there we are right you can sit here now and watch as well he just uh, they crack me up look at him he looks like a really jolly happy reindeer who looks a little bit sheepish like who's eating the christmas pudding it wasn't me it wasn't me honest who's been naughty who's been on the gin oh not me not me so I, I really love these reindeer because they're just really really fun to give them these little characters right let's get a little bit um go a bit smaller here so so you see less of me and more of what we're actually doing right there we are got my pipe cleaner long length and all I'm going to do now is um, I should also mention which I was reminded of earlier that you can get these instructions separately as a PDF as well and um, so you can buy them online from us and then they're a download and in there it tells you step by step it actually starts with a penguin but it tells you step by step of how to make these little baubles and I'm gonna just stick with a reindeer one for now so i'm using a little bit of this brown wool now this is a um this is a hair brown merino and if you look very closely it's actually got like little bits of vegetable matter in there now we don't mind that because as you're stabbing into the wool to felt it down these bits rise to the surface and then you can just literally um pull them off so that normally is not is not an issue but if it if it really bothers you you could try to uh, card them out um or you have to use a different wool but this is perfect for reindeer and for felting down really fast because these are um wool bats and if you've not heard of wool bats they sort of look slightly more um 3d already than a lot of the wool that you can get that um are wool tops and i'll just show you in uh, in comparison this is a wool top it's a long strand of wool i know you wouldn't make a reindeer out of this because it's not the right color but it's a long strand of wool of lots of fibers running side by side this is also a merino so don't think that merino is bad um it's more to do whether it what type of um process has happened to the wool and how long the staple or the fibers are so if you pull this put this on I don't know if i can show you this on the white here if i put this this is the this is the length of the fiber it's very very short it's like literally maybe an inch from there to there if you pull the fiber of this one you can see how much longer just one five one long fiber is that, that it really is that long so even if i make it thinner that's how long the fiber is and if you've got a really long fiber they often get turned into wool tops 
and if you've got a shorter fiber they work really well as um, wool bats and um, and then you can felt it down really fast as a 3d um, into a 3d shape but with this with the reindeer we're starting by wrapping the brown wool around the center so make sure it's in the center I'm just checking it's in the center here wrap this loosely around the center so I'm not good because I know I'm building up bulk lots of bulk because I'm this is going to be the head two ends of the pipe cleaners will be the antlers so I don't need to make a very fine wrap not like with a mice or anything like that and once you've got a little sausage on there then you can um, use your felting mat I've got mine at the ready which is um, the earth friendly felting mat just get rid of some of these needles that I don't need with this um, Port, with this um, hair brown um, Portuguese merino wool you don't want to use a really coarse needle because the shorter and the finer the fiber the less um, it allows the, the coarse needle to stop into it um, itself so I am just literally um, evening these these um, squarish edges off a bit and in the in this at the same time I'm already shaping this so that it becomes more of a of a round shape rather than a um, like a um, an oblong shape so I'm just adding another layer you don't want to put too much um, on there because if you think the actually the antlers need to stick out at the top so you don't want to keep wrapping it and then suddenly have the antlers on the side so at some point now I, um, I I'm going to stop if for whatever reason like what happened here I've actually got a shorter end here than there you can still pull it through a bit because you haven't wrapped it that tightly and so now I'm just going to bend the antlers up because that is basically um, however much I'm going to wrap around the pipe cleaner and now all I'm going to do is I'm starting to build bulk up around the base of of here because that's going to be where the head is going to be and to do this I'm literally putting more around the base than I put at the top and I felt this down so I'm building layer by layer onto this existing um, sausage shape that I've rolled up on the pipe cleaner and I'm felting this down always making sure that I'm now not adding more bulk to the top um, but adding the bulk to the underneath so that it becomes more of a face shape underneath it and you can see how responsive this wool is just by stabbing it a few times with a needle it once it so desperately wants to uh, felt together it is just one of those wools that is just very very responsive and very easy to felt down and um is that you don't stop too deep into this area where the pipe cleaner runs along because um if you really go go for it and you stab the needle deep you might just uh, bend um or worst of all needle. and that is always a danger if you're doing needle felting around a wire armature people often break their needles by a stabbing into wire that's inside their project. Right, so that's looking quite good. We're building up a more and more of a of a um, a base there. So I add a little bit more, and and um, so basically, once it's about five to set six um, in diameter, so from here to there then you start building more bulk onto the front of that um, little um, reindeer's flat. It's not really very round, it's just an, um, a slightly sort of oblong shape, but it isn't as, as round as you we would want it to be. So um, we need to build now the snout onto it. If I show it to you sideways, you can see it's quite flat. But what we really want is, if you look at any of these reindeers here, you now need to build that um, bulk here to have that nose coming out so that's the next bit that we're working on and to do this you basically um, take a little bit of the brown wool decide what's the front and the back of your reindeer and you roll this into a ball very softly roll it into a little ball shape and then all you're going to do is you're literally putting this in, in into the onto the front of your flat shape on one side and you're felting it notice that I'm felting it in around the edges rather than straight into it there we go and um, and now I've, I've added bulk but it doesn't look very nice because it's completely sort of like stuck on literally so to stop this the stacked on look 
I'm taking a little bit more of my brown and I'm flattening it out as much as I can into a flat um, sheet. And now I'm laying this over the top so that I'm covering up the join between that extra um, piece that I felted on and um, and that um, and the head. So I'm adding, I'm making that part of the head more integral um, to the whole shape rather than it just being like a stuck on extra bit. So now I can continue working on the shaping. Um, you can also build up more on the back of the head. Um, when I when um, you can actually make make these into reindeer brooches, they don't have to be um, just um, baubles. And if you want to keep them flat, then make sure that the back of it stays flat. Or you can build a little bit more bulk by just adding layers on the back to make it nice and round. So you're basically shaping the head as you go with little patches of wool. You're laying them on, stabbing them on around the outside of, of that patch that you laid on because you don't want to flatten it straight away and then just give it a few stabs and repeat the process if necessary. So this is now much rounder at the back of the head and then at the front I've got my extra little bit here which um, is very pliable still because it's so soft. This is not solid and hard. This is quite a soft shape. You don't want to make anything that's too hard because then you use a lot of wood and then it becomes quite heavy and then um, it might potentially crush your tree down depending on how big your tree is of course. So once you've got um, that little nose on there, it looks a bit like a teddy bear at the moment, um, you can already get a feel for where the eyes are going and that's always a really good indication to make an indentation for the eyes by just going in one concentrated spot, stab with your needle in there and then do that on the other side as well. This doesn't mean to say that you can't add more bulk or features to your um, reindeer but it, it, it really works well to have an idea of the facial um, details where you're going to go later with um, the glue and eyes which are provided in your pack. Right, so that's um, that's how far I've gone so far. I'm just gonna go a bit bigger and catch up on some of the chat, see where everybody's at. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, where are, um, oh my goodness, so much um, chatter going on. I have to scroll it up. Um, uh, the jewelry. Oh yes, I've I've done that bit. Thank you, um, Sandra. Um, love the, his adorable face. Yeah, you can make some little faces. Will be absolutely adorable if I can go by anything that you've done in the past. Um, so Emma's basically at home. She's she's very busy having a huge home clear out. This is um, your first time off since you've been gone in lockdown. So I don't blame you. It um, it sometimes it's very cleansing just to really rotate and tidy up. I'm going to have a week's holiday soon too, and um, I have a feeling I might might do something similar. Um, oh, they look great. I might have to get a pack. Definitely, face. Get yourself a pack. Um, Reindeer looks a bit sheepish, made of wool. Ha ha ha, that's a funny joke. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? I never think of funny things like that. I just always think of accidental things that come out of I never very well thought through. They just happen accidentally. Uh, I, I lost... Oh, I lost where to comment. I found it again, Laura, I hope, because as you're commenting... Um, Oh, Catherine is late. Better late than never. And um, as you know, you can always watch it from the beginning later on again. Um, hi, can, you're not that late. Shh, and I'll sneak you off. No problem, Catherine, says um, Emma, just in time. Steffi has only just begun a reindeer. Oh, that, yeah, that's it. I, bang, I banged on about all kinds of other things um, before. So let's go back to um, Dia. Um, Let's have a look. Where are we at? There we go. This is what it looks like at the moment. A bit scary, actually. Um, it has got a nice profile, I must say so. Um, I, it could do with a little bit more shaping everywhere around there. I've just dropped something. I'm not entirely sure what, but something just fell down. Okay, if I'm missing anything, I'll, I might have to go diving for it. And of course, what's missing still are is the red nose. Very, very important. We need some ears like that. 
and beneath the ice. And um, so with a lot of the felted projects that you are having a go at, they often look like something completely different from what you're meant to be doing. So I'm going to do a little bit more stabbing now. And of course, if you haven't seen um, the earth mat that we absolutely love, they come in different sizes. This is the smallest that we do. It's uh, a postcard size. Then we do an A5 and we do an A4. We do an A3 and then we have two square extra large and large sizes as well. Now, what you prefer using, whether it's a small or a large, it doesn't really matter. Whatever um, suits suits you. If you're on the go, then the smaller one is obviously far more convenient because it fits much easier in a bag and you don't have to carry extra. If you're working on a small project, when I first, um, when we first trialed these, all I had was a tiny mat that was about, I don't know, a quarter of this. And I, I would you believe it? I made a whole landscape picture on there and I still use it. I just, uh, for me, the size in this on this occasion really doesn't matter. Um, if you have, of course, a really large project and you need to make something large, it's much more, it's much nicer if you can spread it out, if that's what you need to do. But you'd be surprised because the only time the, uh, the stabbing area is so small that you could move your work along instead of moving the needle along, if you see what it means. So I, I don't, I don't actually have a preference. I like, I pick up whatever is lying around. But I, if, I, if I'm on the go, then I, I usually use um, definitely a smaller mat. So right back to the little reindeer. So we've got ears to make. I'm just wondering if that isn't the, the next thing that's actually happening in the instructions. I have a habit of, um, no, it doesn't. That's not what next happens. It's the eyes. OK, so for this, you have some white wool in your pack. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to put fill these eye sockets that I've needle felted by just concentrating the needle stabbing in one area. We're filling these in with white and I'm just going to go small again so you can see it um, closer up. So there's one eye socket, there's a bit of white. I'm laying it down and this is actually a really good way to show what happens with the felting um, process. So I stab the needle and as I'm stabbing it, these white, so they, they become smaller and smaller in concentrated in an area. Um, you do want quite a large patch, especially if you're going to make the reindeer look quite sheepish because it's the white of the eye that makes them look sheepish. Okay, so um, I don't know if, if anybody else is still experiencing buffering, but um, maybe... Um, Emma, if you are if you're listening to this, and I know you will, maybe you can just send a quick WhatsApp message to the rest of the guys in the in the office and ask them to um, just get off the internet. Um, so that that would definitely help. Maybe get all their phones off. There are, after all, about eight people here now working in our on our premises. So if everybody, so this looks really freaky now, and I do apologize for that. But it will get much much better. So what you do next is it's going to be even freakier. You have to have your eyes at the ready. They um that you get two um sizes of eyes in your um reindeer and penguin bauble pack. This is the big size for the reindeer, so don't get them muddled up. The um, the ones for the penguin are much smaller, so you should be able to tell them apart quite easily. Really, really big for the reindeer, much, much smaller for the penguin. And uh, if you have an awl, you can use an awl, but if you don't, then the felting needle will do. And you literally put um, a hole into that white patch all the way through so that um, you can give the needle a wriggle, but only once it's in as far as that. Don't wriggle it before because you might break it. And then you can see the, the little hole that you've made and you instantly insert your eye there like that. If you um, if you want, if you imagine I'm going to move the eye now. So if you want the, re um, the reindeer to look down, I'm sort of trying to push it down. Then can you see you have the white more at the top? If you want it to look sheepish like it's looking up at you, then uh, move the eye further up or you can have it right in the middle. We, we will still do a, lit, a little bit of expression on the eyes when we actually add the eye um, lids to it. Um, so that's entirely up to you. Now you can play on the expression of your reindeer by, reindeer by moving the eyes in, in a different places. And now all you need to do is glue the eyes in. And to do this, just uh, use the tip of a glue bottle and sort of go behind the eye. Don't take the eye out again squirt a bit of glue there, push it in, 
don't worry if the if you're using PVA glue and it comes around the sides don't worry it will dry completely uh, transparent and push the eyes in and now we can forget um, about them for a bit while the glue is drying and that is why we do the eyes before everything else so this one looks quite like staring at the moment yours might have a different expression already and I can't wait to see what you're doing so when when you're ready um, remember come on to everyone a maker Facebook page and share your reindeers with us I'm just having a zip of um, peppermint tea okay and also I understand it's probably quite buffery still so I'm trying what I'm trying to do now is I know what I'm gonna do because I am also on a, on here okay I hope this will get better um, I don't I don't know um, there might be some other people who need to get off the um, website okay I'm also on the website on my phone so I'm gonna go off as well it's no good telling other people and then I am um, the worst so I'm going off there as well try as much data goes into that live stream as possible we are getting better internet um, it's all in the pipeline literally um, but with coronavirus everything has been delayed so I do apologize if, if today is one of those um, stuttery days where you can I'm still trying to um, I don't want to go I will go a little bit lower on the output I just don't want to go too low because then um, it that you lose the detail altogether okay so reindeer that's what we're at at the moment um, looks a bit like he's got googly eyes with his um, unfinished um, little um, antlers and now we're gonna give him a nose so the nose you can pre-shape if you want to by using um, the red wool I'm just gonna go small again so the um, if you pre-shape it you can just um, scrunch it into a little ball you don't need as much red wool as you think even though um, they have really big big red noses of course especially if they're called Rudolph um, but you could I'm just rolling this into a, um, a ball just literally with my fingers and then um, as we did earlier whatever you attach you just stab onto the outside rather than straight into it because that um, ensures the 3d-ness of the shape to stay in place but you're also fastening it on at the same time so you're now literally giving him a little bobble nose try and make that go in the, into the center and once it's on then you can work on reducing the shape um, and the size obviously and and shaping it more so you could um, stab into it straight like that and position the nose a little bit better on his face by stabbing into it there we go so I'm keeping I'm keeping um, it's still in 3d because I'm concentrating on the outside but you can stab into the actual shape as well and I have a feeling that none of what I've tried to do in terms of helping with the Wi-Fi and the buffering has worked I've no idea if when you watch this later if you get a better quality if it's not live but um, um, hopefully it will be otherwise I will be frozen on your screen pulling very very stupid faces which um, probably isn't too funny mind you at the moment it's the reindeer so there we go he's got his nose now aha he's very excited looking at his nose and now we're going to do the ears for this I put him to one side and I'm taking a pinch of this brown wool and you can literally draw an ear on your mat so I'm I'm doing this by stabbing the outline first and I'm folding the wispy bits that are on the outside of that outline into the center of the ear notice that I'm leaving this part wispy because that's the bit that will attach to the ear and I'm just stabbing that into place and when you stub anything flat on the mat you do have to peel it off um, quite quickly you can turn it over and stab it from the other side and then all I'm going to do is I'm giving it a tiny tiny hint of um, a white dusting on the inside so I take a tiny bit of white I'll just put that on the inside of the ear and felt that down it's just so that it looks a little bit different um, like he's got like white ear hair growing out of his ear it's better than black right 
there we go so I've made one ear and now I'm going to do straight away the other one so I can look at it while I'm felting it to make sure I make about the same size and shape and I again I'm just making the outline of the ear on the mat and then pushing in the wispy fibers that are sticking around the outside into the center there we are and then I turn it over stab the other side as well take a bit of dried up grass out of there turn it over and I'm going to add a bit of white like a dusting just just so that it looks like um, a little bit different this is on the inside of the ear this one has got a bit more than the other one and if you can notice I'm sort of pulling it at this end because that like, helps me to shape it so it becomes slightly more oblong than rather just like Mickey Mouse ears like round and you can stub it from the other side and the white up that's absolutely fine but I'm making it a little bit more shaped that way can you see how that works if I'm pulling it and I, I get sort of more of a 3d shape like a little dish I do some more on that one like that as well and then you flatten out the end bits on that ear so they almost they can stand up almost because that is the bit you might have to sometimes take a bit off if you've got too much of it that's the bit that acts as a fastening on platform just like ears like that and then you need your um you need your reindeer da, 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 there it is and uh, oh what's that excuse me do you mind who are you oh who the hell is that okay so who are you yes would you like to um introduce yourself you're looking okay he's looking at the moment but um everybody um meet mr mole mr mole is actually a star he is a maker star da -da -da. there he is he's a maker star because he was one of the first ever needle felted animals that went into the making needle felted animals books so he's been with us more than five years and he has never been needle felted live on screen he's really shy um, because he normally lives in the earth and he doesn't come out very often and and he's recently lost his glasses so he's f felt a little bit insecure but he found he found an old pair somewhere else so I think I might make him a new one at some point but he's coming to you and he's coming to you because you can um, make him through the creative craft shows online tutorial on Facebook on the 28th of July 2020 if you're watching this any time after sorry guys you've had it because this is a private tutorial which means you have to pay a small amount um, to watch it but you can re-watch it anytime so you you pay for the link and it's really really cheap it's only eight pounds but you can make him da -da -da. hello so anyway are you gonna stay here and watch now or yeah okay he he wants to watch that's fine so you don't you don't really have ears but um this reindeer needs his ears um fastened on now and to do this you have to imagine that the ears are sticking out on the side like that so they 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 literally stick out like that and don't worry if they look um oops the wrong way around <laughs> don't worry if they're a little bit too um long um because they will shorten as you're stabbing the wool that you spread out into the head first so at the moment they're sticking out like aeroplane wings and then you can go into that sort of imaginary ear hole and make them a bit more shaped and stab it into the side so they they look like they're fastened on not just across the whole side but more sort of pointy and that way you can fasten the ears on really easily they're on now and then you do this on the other side as well so the ears um from they're not on top of here that's all I, I will tell you but they can be slightly higher towards the antler um, like this one is slightly higher um, where's this one he's got about the same positioning on, on him there so um, that's where the ears are going this little <laughs> this little reindeer is cracking me up he looks like I'm up for it just anywhere just make me just make me he's got these big big eyes looking up at me it's so sweet 
and then you do the same on the other side try and have it in the same position and if for whatever reason you don't like the ear position or whatever just take it off just pull it off and start over again with um, fastening the ear on again you can still um, put this right this is one of the things we absolutely love about needle felting you can always put things right so I'm gonna make this ear I'm gonna pull pull your ear off and put it a little bit higher a bit lower below the antler but it's fine if it's lower um, it's just that one side is uh, slightly higher than the other and I'm starting to felt it on again just as I did to start with there we are so let's have a look at him he's got two ears there he can hear you he can hear us now so we mustn't say anything mean um, you can even shape the ear once they're on if you want to just be careful when you flat felt onto your mat that you um, still lift the ear off rather than pulling it from the head and um, you can make them a little bit more pointy if you want to or keep them round it's um, it's your reindeer you decide what shape ears he has got and um, you can't really go wrong so you've got um, you've got a reindeer now with very very big eyes and you've still got the antlers there now the antlers um, we we leave until the very end because we need to shape them into um, more of an antler shape but what happens next will determine a lot on the size not the size but the expression of your rein reindeer because you're going to use some of the brown wool to give him droopy eyelids if you wish um, so for this I just take a wisp of wool and I um, I roll this just gonna have a little quick look if I'm in the right direction still because like I say I have a tendency to skip um, yeah no that's all fine yeah I'm doing exactly the right thing oh excellent oh I'm, I'm glad I actually follow my own instructions for once so yeah, I've got a wisp of wool here I'm gonna roll this up into a sausage shape and then as soon as you put this on the eye you can see that um, it makes a huge difference this is without and this is with so now you can go really low if you want them to be half close the eye or you can have them slightly higher um, even even um, a lot higher up there that's entirely up to you but the lower you make them the more sort of dopey they look and then you just stab this eyelid into the side of the um, eye here first it's a bit of grass in there again there and um, and leave them really 3d so really do not flatten them um, too much at all just um, stab them on very lightly like that and then if you need to just do a few steps into the brown but um, keep them as as um, as 3d as possible and then you do the same on the other side so take approximately the same amount of brown roll it into um, a little ball lay it over that droopy eye and then stab them in so that they're the same or they can be different if you want to give him an extra expression they can be different I'm just gonna have a look at him oh you're very handsome little reindeer I do like you just, um, so you can see now why it's really important to put a big disc of white in um, onto the area below the, the black eyes and um, if you if this bothers you that it's so distinct then of course um, all you need to do is just cover it up with a little bit of wool on either side of the eyelid and just um, make it more integral but I actually do um, quite like that it looks like an, an added on eyelid but um, that's entirely up to you you can make it more integral of the head and of course you can continue shaping the head as well um, even when you've added that and then as a final touch you can give him a little lip and a li little mouth um, so you can um, felt if you do a, a consistent line under the nose you will see that automatically it turns sort of into um, a little mouth Just give it a few steps and then this is optional but you can enhance that a little line that you've needle felted there by adding a little bit of um, wool inside to make it more obvious just use the tiniest amount of white put that there just as a as another um, little feature 
that you've added. So now he's got a, it's almost like he's smiling with his teeth bearing. So there he is. He's now, um, he's now almost done, but, but for the hair and for the antlers. And I'm just going to go big again and then um, hopefully um, I can um, show you him like that as well. There he is. Very happy. He's wearing a nice dress today. And um, if you haven't seen Mr. Mole properly, he is there and I will show you how to make him on the 28th of July. All you need to do is go onto the Facebook page, The Creative Craft Show, you can find it really easy. Hopefully somebody's linked it here already. I haven't looked at the comments at the moment and um, it's eight pounds and it will you pay, you pay for the link for the tutorial which is not a one off it's not like once you've seen it that's it um you it's your link that stays uh, stays your link and you can rewatch it so you can watch it one time round it's very very little materials that we tell you on that link what materials you need to make it and if you uh, want to get in touch with us we even help you um if you if you're not sure what to get um so now i'm going to um make the antlers and to make the antlers i still haven't got any <laughs> God, this is so terrible i still haven't got any wire cutters down here um but i have got scissors but you mustn't cut your um wire with scissors and all you're doing is now you're cutting that whole length of antlers which is in effect only half of the pipe cleaner in half like that and then you do the same on the other side like that and I just quickly go small so you can see it really close up so I've got my two pipe cleaner ends here now and all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap these around the pipe cleaner the main length just once and then you can push them down and then you can push them push them up um, the the individual lengths so that you have made a little um, kind of I don't know what that is um, like a tree tree thing and um, what's just happened is that my camera one of my cameras has fallen off and uh, so I won't be using that one but I might have to just adjust it because um, it also means like I um, you will see that camera in. so I'm just gonna move that out of the way okay so here we are that's um, that's done so he now has got antlers you can bend them into place they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical they just grow um in different ways of course and now you can decide what color hair he's gonna have so this is the exciting bit because you can sort of try it on it's a bit like trying different hairdos so you can um you can put it in of, into onto his face already and just see if he's if he's like um got a full growth of hair maybe going down to his um into his eyes because he's been in lockdown and obviously hasn't been able to get to the hairdresser you can give him a um, a black hairdo because you can just pinch a bit from the penguins of the black you could mix the two easy to mix just have your gray so the gray you're pinching from the penguins as well so don't take too much because um, you need to make the penguins yet but I'm just mixing a bit so you could have more like a, um, a black he could be like a really um, wild wild reindeer with a really wild hairdo um you could um i just i just love how you can play with them and make them um have all kinds of um this is sort of salt and pepper hair um or you could give him white like he's a really a really um old one there who's got a white shock of hair there so it's entirely up to you <laughs> what you want to do i think i'm gonna stick with um he has more of a of a young look my my um handsome little reindeer so i'm just going to give him um maybe uh let's just see i have to have a little think because i don't i think i quite like that gray that's that um salt and pepper look so and then all you do is you just felt it onto the top of his head it doesn't need to come to the back of his head um it just needs to sit like a tuft on top um of his head so you don't cover the back you just felt it on however you want in whatever form and fashion just give it a few stabs and um he's got a, a quite a, a slick um lock 
going into his face even that way and um, and that's him so and then as before with the baubles uh, to hang them up you just thread the thread that you also get in the pack um, it's um, you don't have to use that you can use your own but if, if you haven't got one then this is what you get and all you need to do is cut a length off use a needle I'm using a long needle because then um, it goes all the way um, through the head threaded only single in through the top like that all the way out at the bottom like that turn round go back up come out at about the same place where you came in and then pull it and then you've got a really secure um, hanging there and then you can adjust the thread still if you need it to be the same length by just pulling it and put a knot on it and then you've got your secure hanging so you can do this with a um, with a more delicate looking thread if you wish but he's ready to go onto your Christmas tree and of course however you um, uh, this could have maybe been coming out a bit more from the top of his head so he's slightly looking down but then if he's if he's hanging on the tree looking down at you that might be quite nice too then he's ready to be hung on the tree on your Christmas tree or your yeah and um, and there you are you've made your little reindeer Christmas bauble ready for Christmas and maybe ooh, he's not he's not very well behaved he's now very boisterous and if you um, Maybe you can make a whole, the whole of your family members. He's got a ginormous um, red nose, actually. You can make that smaller by felting it down, of course. And that's basically the little reindeer bauble. So easily done, needle felted in no time whatsoever. And, um, and you can do it too. And next, I'm gonna show you quickly how to do a penguin. But before that, I'm gonna check on the, on the chats, see that everybody's okay. Um, so, uh, mm. yeah, sorry about the poor um, quality. I have no idea why it does that. Um, sorry about that. It's really bad at the moment. So, Diane is saying that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Everybody's buffering. Okay. Um, some of you are better now. Okay, I think most of it was just talking about buffering. I'm really sorry. Did you see me like this? Was it like that? <laughs> that wasn't buffering, that was me. <laughs> you see, I was doing it on purpose. Um, okay, so uh, what else have I got to tell you? Um, 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 oh, yes more Christmas kits this is one of my favorites talking about uh, making them look funny and with funny expression on the faces I absolutely love this one it's one of my favorites to teach in workshops because we all have such a laugh of making like really funny looking uh, snowmen and they remind us of somebody and you can still play with the face um, on these I'm just trying to see if I've got um, the making simple needle felt book yeah, oh, that's the one I haven't got. I've got all the others. Anyway, um, have a look in there because you can play with the facial. Um, and then we've got the needle felted Christmas mice. So if you've liked the mice, this one is exactly the same. Makes three mice, but what you get extra, because we're always very generous at Christmas, you get extra wool to make these little Christmas hats. And we have a free tutorial for those hats on our um, workshop. And of course, it's that time... Oh, that's going to tip over when we all need a little tomter or um, a gnome or maybe you want to turn one of them into a Father Christmas and um, they're really fun to make too. So um, I thought I'd just show you two, three of our new Christmas, well they're not new Christmas kits but they are now available to buy on our website. Um, we've got a few days left for the dachshunds. I've seen some amazing dachshunds. And if, you, if you're if you dithering, if you're not quite sure, don't dither. It's so worth having that one. So you can make um, one of these, one of these, and one of these, all from one 
box. They come with a little um, collar and a little tag. So they're legal as well. You don't have to have a dog without a collar uh, and, a, and a tag. And um, you get wool to make a little tennis ball as well because they obviously need a ball to play and they're very good. They play together with um, one ball. And um, just as a sneak preview, oh yes, and the Wild Rose Fairy um, box is still available as well. Makes um, a beautiful fairy with that really vibrant pink dress and um yeah lots of lots of beautiful flowers you can make with it separately that doesn't come in the kit and a sneak oh yes and a sneak preview to next month's box of course are the sloths that's a wall hanging hanging it's a wire armature technique where you wrap the wool around the pipe cleaners and what else oh yes and the sunflower fairy is the one that's coming in august there you are, she's in her full glory and you get the decorations um, like a little ladybird. In fact, you get two and two sunflowers and she's got a really beautiful hair and um, and just, yeah, just really love making her. She's she's a nice one. Definitely go for that one. And um, news of the McHoggies. Oh, the time is just taking for Homer to get home and Homer wants to go home and... Um, and they're all very patiently waiting and there's there is um there's heather um humble she's keeps trying on her christmas dress because she's not so sure it still fits but i think she looks quite smart in it um and um and little little huey i know what he's getting for christmas oh, i can't tell you because it's a surprise because he's here in the room and i don't want him to hear so but i do know what he's getting for christmas and um, yeah, it's gonna be nice. I also know what Heather is getting for Christmas, but I can't tell you either because she's here in the room. And I know what Holly is getting for Christmas too. And I can't tell you that either because she's also in the room. And I can maybe tell you what Homer is getting because he's not in the room because he's far, far away and he wants to come home, but he's not allowed to come home yet. So, um, I don't want to tell you what Homer is getting, just in case he's watching. But I do know what he's getting, but I won't tell you what he's getting. So, um, yes, that's another story for another time. And let's have Heather here as well. She just needs to put her shoe on. She's a bit relaxed. There we are. Um, and there's Heather. And she, I know also what she's getting. And she'll love it. Um, but anyway, so they've all gone now. Um, yeah, shall we shall we see how Homer is doing while while we're at it? Where is Homer then? He's um because he's not with them. He's somewhere else entirely. He's here. Homer is here. Homer, how are you doing? How are you um coping at the moment? You want to get home, don't you? I know. And you also know that Heather, she's actually she's working really hard. She's not just looking after your children. She's also she's also a nurse. So she is in hospital every day looking after people and um and Homer just thinks, Oh, if it only was Christmas, she's saving up her holidays so that they can have a nice long Christmas holiday and he's already really happy in when he's got a little time he's he's practicing watch wait for this he's practicing his tango because he can't wait to have a good old boogie with his wife heather having a tango and um they, they're really good dancers they go have been going to dance lessons um for a long time when when he's at home and he can't wait to have a really good like almost like a dance off um Yes, like strictly dancing, like that. So he's absolutely excited about that and he can't wait. <laughs> he's shaking in his boots at the moment. He can't wait to have a little dance. And because he's on a on a on an oil rig, he can't there's no really there's nobody he can have a dance with. And in any case, he only likes dancing with Heather, his beloved wife that he's gonna see very, very soon. Won't be long before Christmas home. I just hang in there, hang in there. Okay, so um but as we're talking about Christmas, let's talk about um, penguins. So this is a penguin bauble. I show you um, it's going to be a bit of a faster tutorial to make this because we spent more time on the reindeer. And for this, you need some white wool. Remember, you get it all in your pack. But otherwise, this is actually the bleached white that we sell um, that we've put in the packs. And you need to roll this into a soft ball, literally like a snowball. This is very similar to the Robin 
and um, pudding um, baubles that I made um, and I showed you make on one of the last live streams. And once you've rolled it up so that you've literally got these wispy ends at the end, these are the ones that you stub in with your needle so that you stub in these loose ends first. Just making sure you can see what um, I'm doing here. And I'm keeping these quite loose, so I'm not making this into a solid. It's a, it's a soft, friendly snowball. If you throw that at somebody, it's not going to hurt them. It's a nice, lofty snowball. And I'm just literally stabbing in these wispy ends, and I'm keeping this nice and, and round, giving it a bit of a shaping by stabbing the needle into it. And again, it's best to use um, a medium needle for this because the fibers are very fine and um, they don't like... I'll just show you what happens if you use a really coarse needle. So you see me do this with a medium needle and I can feel it's nice. It's crunching nicely. The fibers are tucking in just as I want them to. I don't have to force the needle in and it's not too loose that the needle sort of just does nothing. And you think you're just stabbing a sewing needle into it. But when you use a too coarse needle and you go in, can you see how you're fighting it? I can go in there, but it actually a lot of the time the needle is just bouncing off. It's actually not doing anything, and 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 then you get some really sort of severe dents, and it's no you 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 lose the opportunity, especially on a soft shape, to um, felt it quite slowly all around because you get you get too much work done or none at all because the needle just keeps bouncing and bouncing. So just a few stabs. And then you're going to use the black wool and you're making that um, that cover for the penguin. And the way to do that is by taking a good pinch, about that much, and make it sort of flat because it will be a flat shape that's going, that's going on top. And then you lay it on top of um, the ball. And all you're going to do now is you're actually going to stab into the front of the face so you're just establishing almost like one distinct area you're just stabbing in here and then you're stabbing along the sides like that in a in sort of a sweeping round area and then you're folding these wispy ends in so you have a nice neat area here um, and then you're doing the same. I have to look at the front, but you've got one side done and one side's not done. And then you have to do that on the other side. So try and do this in the same way so that it um, it's symmetrical. Um, I will show it to you again. I'm just trying to do this so you can see it by going into the side. So I've made my sort of round area here. And then you are uh, folding the wispy ends in. don't know if you can see this. Fold the wispy ends in. And all you've done now is you've made almost like sort of a dip in the face. The the rest is still loose and fluffy. I haven't felted this down yet. And I'm just going to work on the front a little bit more to make it more symmetrical so that I have literally got um, a mirror image there by just stabbing into it and adjusting that black wool a little bit more. And now I'm going to stab it down like a center parting in the top of the bauble. In the um, top of the penguin if you've got a bald patch that's better than having too much wool on there and whenever you um, stop your shape it kind of goes a little bit out of shape so it's become a little bit flatter so you can all the time you're working on this re-establish the round shape of your bauble by just going into the areas that need um, shaping again so just look at your shape wherever you stub the needle is where the in, um, where the reduction takes place and if you need to push some areas in that you would naturally use your fingers for if this was clay that's where you stub the needle if you've got a hole poking your needle more into it will just make it worse so at the moment i have got um the penguin here and i'm literally just going short um small up for a minute to show you so i've got the penguin here with his little face with that dip here of the nose and then this is the back so I'm working on this back bit which is going to be the tail by stabbing that flat at the moment 
and I'm shaping this by tucking the wispy fibers in. And remember what I said earlier, anything you felt flat on your mat, you do have to keep lifting off occasionally just so that um, you don't fasten it too much and then it becomes so integrated into your felting mat. This works, this is the same on all felting mats. Um, and I am working on the tail that way and then I'm turning it around and I can work on the tail the other way. Now the way that I want this tail to be, I don't want it to stick out like that. I actually want it to be almost integral of the penguin. So I'm stabbing it down a little bit now onto the round shape of the ball and I'm literally just making sure that there's a like, like a little kick, like a tiny little tail sort of kicks out. Can you see just, just a little bit here that sort of comes out so I'm I've shaped it and I fastened it um, down and now I am making sure that that it's actually not too big a tail and that it's symmetrical to the rest of the the body as well so that I have a, a small tail here that um, just a little so when if you've made the robin with me on one of the other tutorials the robin has got actually a much bigger tail end than the little um, penguins and again I'm just stabbing all around my white snowball because um, it gets a bit put out of shape so in in the time in all the while I'm stabbing into it I am actually firming up the ball as well so what was a really really soft and lofty ball is now still it is still squishy there's a lot of squish in it um, but it's it firms up nevertheless so um, this is not a solid rock solid ball this is quite a, a soft squishy shape still so I've got my little tail sticking out here I've got the front there with that little beak and um, or beak area where the beak will actually go and now I'm going to um, give my penguin little wings and for this I have to use the grey wool there and I'm felting these separate on the felting mat first Similar to the ears of the reindeer, I'm just flat felting it and then pu pushing the wispy fibers inward. So I'm making almost like a leaf shape, stabbing this on here, pulling it off, turning it round, stabbing it on the other side as well. There, pulling it off, turning it round. And I'm leaving these wispy ends unfelted as I did with the reindeer e ears like that and then I make a second one straight away you can felt this down a lot more neater a lot more um, a lot less wispy do the same with this one fold the wispy ends in this one here by the way is a Gotland lamb that's the breed of the sheep it's a really really beautiful natural gray it's not that easy to get such um, a pure gray in in um, sheep breeds but the, um, the Gotland lamb is perfect for, for this project because it's, um, we also sell the Gotland Island, which is basically the grown up sheep version. And this is the lamb version and it's slightly lighter and slightly, it's just a really, really lovely soft gray. So once you've done your two wings, you are going to fasten them onto the side of the penguin. And this time I'm literally just stabbing them into, I want that those I want the um, the grey fibres to just disappear into the penguin on the side. So I'm folding them in and making them disappear. And if you've got a wing that's slightly long, don't worry about it because you can shorten the wing by going at a shallow angle into um, the full length of the wing and just sort of push push it upwards and push it in so the um, the wing itself can can be reduced quite a lot um, by doing that just adjusting it you can also do that from the underneath to adjust the size of the wing it's quite long this wing I'm just shortening it a lot by just stabbing the gray fibers right into the side of the penguin um, and then you can fasten the wing on to the side of the body, but for a tiny little bit here at the base that can sort of um, kick out a little bit like the tail, just making the end of that wing a little bit neater because I left it quite fluffy. So I'm just going to um, quickly... So I've got I've done one wing here on the side now and then I'm going to do the other. This one is actually a lot smaller, this wing, so it um, needs less 
um, of the fibers tucking away inside. Let's get rid of them. Tuck them away. Like that. And, um, and then you can work on this side as well. Try and keep it symmetrical. And then um, what you're going to do next is you're going to um, give the penguin a beak. The beak is made separately with a bit of black because it's black on black. You're not going to see very much of this on screen. But I'm just going to make a beak by folding this wool in half and then rolling it in from the side to make a pointy, a pointy shape. I'm felting this beak separately on the mat first, only the front bit and leaving the um, end bit wispy because that will help me to attach it to the face of the penguin like that. If you've got a lot of fibers on the back, then just tear some off, open this up, put it on front of the penguin's face like that and then just stab it in into that dip that you felt it into the onto the white of the snowball and felt the beak in by just stabbing really close to where it gets uh, fastened onto and again I noticed that I'm um, sort of putting my shape out of shape a little bit so I've got to adjust that to make that beak a bit shorter by stabbing it more into the face and then going round the sides where the wool needs to be adjusted. So I've got a little puff, puffed up penguin there at the moment. And then um, to I'm um, for the eyes, all you do is you poke a hole into the white, like this, like you did with the reindeer. And then you sink the smaller eyes that come in our pack. Um, this this is I think this is five millimeter, and the reindeer eyes are seven or even eight millimeter and um, put these in there like that make them disappear and then as before all you do is you just use your glue end of the pen put a bit of glue on there push them in don't worry if the glue spills out around the sides push them in close this up and um, strictly speaking um, these little penguins don't really have when they're baby penguins they don't have um, orange on them but as we are completely stylizing this penguin, um, you can you can put a tiny bit of orange on just under the wings. I think it does make it just makes it really nice to have a bit of an offsetting color there. So you can just put that under there, like almost like rosy cheeks, and put that there as a feature, more or less. There's quite a lot of orange in this pack. You some people also give them um, orange beaks. That's fine too. That's not really what um, our design is, but you can do whatever you like. We, we're got, not going to come and check, um, knock on your door and check that you've followed our directions entirely. So he's got a bit more orange on that side than on the other side. So I'm going to do a bit more on that side. And then you've got your um, little penguin. Did I say Robin earlier? I don't know. May, I may have used Robin instead of penguin. But it is very similar to a robin in, in, in that the shaping and the features are very similar with the exception of the colors, of course. Make that a bit more solid, that wing. And our eyes popping out. Put the orange on. And he's done. That's it. It's as easy as that. And of course, you can work a lot longer on this, longer than I just did in a, in a few minutes, in five minutes or however long this has taken. And you can firm it add up along more, a lot more, and you can make it a lot more perfect, and you can add, um, you can um, add more shaping by stabbing more into it. But that's basically um, a little penguin done super quick with a little little kicky out tail there and a little white tummy, and um, done very quickly. And he can join his friends now to hang on the Christmas tree. You put the thread in from the top all the way through out the bottom as you did with um, the reindeer and then you've got a whole collection of little penguins ready to feel all all festive when you are ready to feel festive and that's basically the um, reindeer and the penguin bauble pack all covered now remember we do have the robins and the um, puddings as well 
which come in a pack like that. Make six, same as with a penguin with a reindeer. Have got all the um, accessories in there, but no tools. You need to use your own tools. I've got to flap up my nose again. And um, it would be great if you tell your friends about our um, YouTube channel. Tell your friends about um, us in general. We do have, if you're a subscriber, we have a special treat um, this month where you can get a box um, to for your f friends to try. If you haven't found out about this yet, then just get in touch with us. I'm just going to read some of the um, comments here. Oh, we still, I, I'm reading all the hoggy comments now. Um, got my tickets, looking forward to it. Oh, this is for Mr. Mole. Yeah, let's make a Mr. Mole. And then I can introduce you to um, his family as well. Um, he's also got a family, but it's not as exciting a story as with um, the hoggies. They are already united. Um, made it must change my shopping day oh you're going out shopping um Teresa sorry I'm rubbing my nose but I do have fluff up my nose uh so Alicia has been needle felting alongside excellent um oh and Emma thinks that the reindeer is her favorite bauble she loves um this particular one she loves this little where is he I don't even know oh have I, no, I'm not. I, I thought I was still wearing him. No, he's here. He's here. Um, this one. Yeah, he's got a very, very sheepish, um, <laughs> quite a silly look on his face. He can look at you now there. Um, I have missed, have I missed the penguins? No, I don't think you have missed the penguins. The penguins have just been. Uh, no. Um, oh, he looks cheery. I love the reindeer. Oh, I, I can't wait to see your reindeer. It has so much scope for really, really amazing cute little and also very dopey little faces um love his eyes thank you Teresa. plan to make one later tonight he's super cute karen says hi steffi love your little hoggy stories i made a christmas robin not from your pack just to try came out cute well talking about robins i actually did bring these down because we do have a um, realistic robin kit as well that makes two with our um, amazing bird legs and um, you can make if you're not so sort of into the cutesy um, stylized stuff then why not make a robin that looks more like the real robins that will be very very soon they're already in the gardens but they're not so not so cheeky at the moment they become very cheeky around Christmas um, I can't wait for the hoggies to come down me neither Scotland lamb thank you for sharing that everybody um, Faith says, I'd love to have you come over for a Maker's Makes inspection. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're not doing that. So uh, we couldn't possibly do that, even if you'd loved us to do this. Um, love this pack. Teresa says, with all the Facebook chat about farmers not selling fleeces, as no profit in it for them. Have you found it harder to source fleeces? Has the price gone up for you? Our prices have actually gone up. We get a lot of our wool from... Um, um, outside the UK, though, we do support a lot of rare breed um, sheep and it's it's from GOTS certified um, supplies. And if you don't know about GOTS, GOTS is the um, the um, accreditation that looks after the welfare of the of the animals. So um, why am I telling you about this? Um, oh, yes. Prices have gone up. Yes, prices have actually gone up um, totally. But I don't know why they've gone up. Um, so, which is never good when, good when prices go up because then we have to put our prices up and then um, you guys say, why have you put your prices up? And we're like, well, because our prices were put up and yes, and so on and so forth. But um, we, we, will, we always try and be as fair as we possibly can um, and we're always there to help. And um, we are trying to do the right thing by buying from reputable um, suppliers. So we don't want any, we don't want to be responsible that some sheep have suffered. Um, and of course, a lot of the sheep, I'm not saying that, you know, they're probably still happy running around the fields, but there are some unethical shearing methods and we don't um, participate in any of, of those kind of things. So we don't buy from farmers who do that, um, basically. Um, what else do I need? To, oh, yes. And in terms of the, the dyes, so we only buy um, dyed wool that has got the eco certification. So it's all non-toxic and 
environmentally conscientious and all the rest of it. That, that's something else we do. And um, have I actually run out of things to tell you? Probably because it's also time for me to go. So thank you very much for watching. Just have another quick sneak if anybody else has got a burning issue. But otherwise, I will love you and leave you. Or is it I will leave you and love you? I, well, in any case, I leave you and I love you. Um, and I, it doesn't matter which way around. And um, oh, yes. And what I should also say is thanks to Alicia. She has actually uh, reminded me, though I've no idea where I've put this stuff now. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, I've got a couple more things to show you. So first of all, it's toadstools uh, this week. Today is Tuesday. On Thursday, it's toadstools, so I'm hiding them, but I don't need to. But you, you can make a toadstool with me that looks, well, you know, all know what a toadstool like, looks like. But you can make them in pink as well, or maybe in purple, or maybe in orange. So you can make uh, toadstools with me on Thursday. That's also a live stream on YouTube. And a lot of people have been asking about witches. So if you are quite recent to us, then you might know that we have actually, I haven't even taken out the box. Sorry. Come on. Come on, you old witch. There you are. Is that which one? Oh, sorry. I just need to sort the witches out. There's, um, there's two. Oh, this one. So um, uh, we will be doing a tutorial for one of these. Yeah, look at her with her great big warts and smelly old sticky out tooth um and we will also show you how to make her broom there is already a pack that we sell to make these more intricate hands like that um but there will be an option to make very easy hands as well and if you don't if you're not into witches but you prefer wizards you can make a wizard instead and um, you can make him a wand that can turn that can make anybody shake in their boots so I ca and I've got some amazing Halloween decorations. There's going to be a, a lot of Halloweeny stuff coming up, including pumpkins and ghosts and um, spiders. Um, yeah, that's it. So um, if you, yeah, if you if you want to make one of these, oh look look, he actually looks like he's talking. If you want to make one of me, then uh, come on. Oh, I, I'm not a um, something something twist. I can't remember the word, but you know when you speak from your tummy. Velen Velen twist twist no it's not a twist but you know what I mean one of those I'm not like that but I could be if I only could do it he could talk because he looks like he wants to say a lot and he's quite um he's got quite an amazing nose actually um and there is the witch the witch and the wizard so you can make either of these uh, really easy to make she's got a fantastic hair um purple and red curls Emma there's an idea for you. So, um, yes, join us for those. They're coming up in September. Um, so to get ready, we always have a list on our tutorial sec um, on our um, at upcoming tutorials that tells you what tells you what you need and you've got time to get it all. That's it from me today. Um, I think. What's in here? Oh, that's the snowman. I have to just show you some um, funny looking snowman. There you are. That's what the snowmen look like. They're all cozied up in that box because they haven't come out yet to play. So, um, okay, I'm going to shut up now because this is just getting on, going on way too long. Um, any, in any case, I know I won't see you, Daniel and Rachel on Thursday, but you can still watch it afterwards. So it's not lost. Make another, another uh, event from it. Um, quick look at the comments and then I'm going to shoot off. So that's it. Okay, nothing new. Excellent. That means I can I can disappear now. Um, by the snip of the wand, wand of the wizard, I will be poof. Literally, I will be poof, gone. <laughs>